Okay, so now we're on chapter 29, and we're talking about vertebrates. Well, we're talking about chordates, actually. Not all chordates are vertebrates, but most chordates are vertebrates. Here's something all chordates have in common. And by the way, when I'm talking about chordates, I'm talking about us. I'm also talking about fish, amphibians, birds, reptiles, mammals, and we are mammals, so that includes us. So chordates all have these things. They have a tail, and you might say, I don't have a tail, but you did when you were uh, an embryo. They have pharyngeal pouches, also known as gill slits. And you say, I don't have gill slits, but you did when you were an embryo. And they have a dorsal tubular nerve cord. And you might say, I don't have a tubular nerve cord. And I say, yeah, you actually did. <laughs> and a notochord. And you say, I don't have a notochord. But your notochord existed when you are an embryo, and it changed into your backbone. Wow. So this notochord here becomes the backbone in all vertebrates. And the nerve cord here remains the nerve cord. This backbone will actually grow around the nerve cord. So the nerve cord is inside the backbone, protected by the backbone. But as an embryo, we call it a notochord. So all chordates have those characteristics at some point in their life. So the pharyngeal popular like gills? They're like gills, uh -huh, gill slits. And those disappear. They're only present in our embryos, and they become part of the part of your throat, the back of your throat. There are no more gill slits for us, but they're alive and well in the fish. And um, the simplest chordate of all, it looks like this. It's called a lancelet. Have you ever heard of a lancelet before? Mm -hmm. Lancelets are kind of famous because they're used in developmental biology studies. So there's a very good chance you might see them say something about the lancelet on, a, on an AP bio test. It's, it's just a very simple chordate. It's small. It's like that long. It digs down into the gravel or the sand at the bottom of... Um, some body of water and sticks its head out and filter feeds. And that is the simplest chordate. It's got the gill slits, it's got the nerve cord, it's got the notochord, it's got the tail. That's the simplest chordate? That's the simplest chordate. There's another kind of chordate that doesn't look at all like a chordate. It's called a sea squirt or tunicate. You ever heard of that before? Mm -hmm. If you ever cleaned off the bottom of a boat, you've probably seen these things. They'll attach to anything they can. They live in the ocean. Attached to the bottom of the boat or the bottom of a dock. And if you grab them, they'll squirt water out. They're called sea squirts. And they're filter feeders. They take in water in one siphon and shoot it out the other and just filter feed. And all the other characteristics, the tail and the notochord, they disappear as this thing evolves. But if you were to look at one of these things when it was a baby, it would have looked almost just like this. So it's a relative. A relative of the lancelet. So are the baby's free, sw free swimming? And the baby's are free swimming, and these things are, what do you call it if it's not free swimming? Sedentary. Okay. Sky. We have to know about the post anal That's just the tail. That's just the tail. The tail behind the anus. Question. Yep. 
Do we know like the jawfish, the cartilage? Yeah, so that's what I'm going to go over here. So these are all the different groups. And I just very briefly talked about lancelets and tunicates. They're the simplest of the chordae. I'm not going to spend any time on them, though. That's marine bio. We talk about them a lot. If you like them, if you like this kind of stuff, take marine bio. These organisms have a notochord. All the other ones from here up are all vertebrates, which means they have a backbone, which means that that notochord changed into a backbone. And here they are, the jawless fish. There's only two types of jawless fish left on Earth. The, uh, the hagfish and the lamprey. All the other jawless fish are extinct. Imagine a fish that couldn't close its mouth because it didn't have a jaw. Swims around like this all day. Swims around with an open mouth. The lampreys will suction onto something and suck their blood. And the hagfish are just weird looking, gross skin. <laughs> Sift through the mud. I'll, sh I'll show you some pictures. Well, once then jaws evolved. Y'all know what jaws are, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have the cartilaginous fish. And they developed jaws. And they ate most of the jawless fish. That's why we don't have jawless fish anymore. They got eaten by the fish that evolved jaws. If you could chew, then you can catch anything that's pretty big and chew it up in little pieces. And once the cartilaginous fish evolved, they pretty much ate most of these things. Most of the jawless fish and most of the various species of invertebrate chordates. And a lot of the other stuff in the ocean too, those invertebrates that we studied in the ocean. A lot of them got eaten up by the cartilaginous fish. The landscape of animals changed a lot when cartilaginous fish evolved. And they're still with us today, although humans hunt them, so that the numbers of sharks are going down. But even something, a better invention came about, the invention of the bony skeleton. Instead of having a cartilage skeleton that's pretty soft and a little bit weak, why not evolve with something harder, bone? Bone is lightweight and strong, and the the bony fish evolved, and that's a bony fish. And the bony fish, actually, there's a lot more of them than there are cartilaginous fish. So what do sharks have? Sharks have a cartilaginous skeleton. But, so does that mean they have a backbone, like a vertebrae that's not made out of bone? It's made out of cartilage. Mm -hmm. What is, like, cartilage like? Cartilage is soft. Let me grab, let me grab a skeleton here so you can see. Cartilage. So, I was given an anatomy test today, so my skeleton's in pieces, but cartilage here, bone here, okay? You can see vertebrae here, and that's cartilage, soft. It's tough, but it's so cartilage is tough, but it's soft. It's like your nose. Your nose is made of cartilage. Your ears are made of cartilage. It's it's hard, but it's soft. It's, it's tough, but it's soft. Um, your entire skeleton starts out as cartilage when you're a baby in the womb, and it hardens into bone while you develop. And so some of our skeleton is still cartilage, but most of it's bone. And the bone is better, is more protective. So bone evolved in these ray fin fish, or bony fish is what we call these, and they did really well. There's thousands of different species of bony fish. I think there's 40,000 species, something like that. I took an ichthyology class, and we studied hundreds of the species. Then lungs evolved. Some of the fish evolved lungs. Have you ever seen a lung fish or heard of them? Some of them evolved to be able to gulp air. Like no, not a dolphin. A dolphin's a mammal, actually. Like goldfish. Um, sometimes gold, you see goldfish doing it. It's kind of like that. A mud skipper. Have you ever heard of that kind of fish? I'll, I'll, I'll try and show you some, some pictures of these things. 
But some of them evolved to be able to gulp air, to take in air. There's a lot more air, there's a lot more oxygen in the air than there is in the water. So if you can gulp air, you can get more oxygen. And some of these same fish evolved, their fins evolved into limbs. This fish right here is called a coelacanth. And if you look at its fins, it actually has bones and muscles in the fins. And it can drag itself around. Those little mud skippers, if you watch them, they can drag themselves around on land with their fins. That's the beginnings of arms and legs. So the, the low fin fish are fish that develop fins that have bones and muscles in them. And some of these low fin fishes evolved lungs to work along with their gills. And pretty soon, not pretty soon, but after about 40, 50 million years after they evolved, you see amphibians evolve. Amphibians spend their baby time as fish, tadpoles, in their adult time on land. Y'all seen a tadpole change into a frog? <coughs> it looks like a fish changing into a, a tetrapod. A tetrapod means you walk around on four limbs. The tadpole loses its fins, and it loses its tail, and it grows arms and legs. The evolution of fish into amphibians can be seen in one lifetime of a single frog. And so that change occurred over several million years. And that's why we got the four limbs here. And then there are some amphibians. Now, amphibians still have to go to water to, to mate and lay eggs. Did y'all know that? So some of the amphibians evolved to be able to live away from water. And they evolved an egg, what we call an amniotic egg. If you lay an amniotic egg, you don't have to lay your eggs in water. You simply lay an egg that has a hard shell that's full of water that the mother drank during her life, and, she, and her body put it into an egg, and you put the baby in there, and you give it some food, which is called yolk, and you lay the egg. And the baby develops, it's in water, so it won't dry out, it's got food, and it can grow inside that egg until it gets so big it kind of fills the egg and then it breaks out of the egg and scurries off. And you don't have to go back to water to lay your eggs like amphibians do. That's a big advantage and we call those reptiles. Now some of them, they aren't showing birds on here because birds are actually closely related to reptiles. See it says includes birds. Birds are basically just reptiles that evolved to be warm-blooded and have feathers. Um, a bird is, DNA is real close to a reptile. What about turtles? Because they lay their eggs in the turtles are ba or Turtles are kind of like dolphins. Mammals, some of the mammals evolved to go back in the water, like, like dolphins turtles. and whales. Some of the reptiles evolved to go back in the water, like turtles. So turtles are reptiles? Turtles are reptiles. They're showing a sea turtle there. The first reptiles, though, evolved on land, and some of them evolved to go back in the water. And then finally, the mammals evolved mammary glands to feed their kids with milk. And they evolved the uterus. Have y'all ever heard of a uterus? <laughs> It's an organ that allows you to keep the young inside of you instead of laying it in an egg. There are some mammals that lay eggs like a platypus, but most mammals have their young develop inside of them in the uterus. And then, see, egg, the, thing, the bad thing about an egg is if the mama's gone, something can get to the eggs. If you have a uterus and have the baby develop inside of you, then if you're going to get the baby, you've got to go through the mom. And there's a lot of creatures that aren't big enough or strong enough to do that. So um, mammals evolved 
the uterus, the baby develops inside. Most mammals give birth to a baby that can already run around on its own. It's only the humans and a few other types that give birth to a kind of a helpless baby that we have to care for for a while. Most animals don't do that. The baby's born and it struggles around for a little while, it's a few days, and then it's, it can kind of run on its own and defend itself to some extent. The mammals are warm-blooded. The mammals and the birds evolved to be able to survive in really cold climates. And so we keep our body temperatures high. We pay a price to keep our body temperatures high. You know what that price is? Food. Food, we have to eat a lot. A snake eats once a month. We have to eat three times a day. Why do we do that? To keep a high body temperature? Because we're evolved to be able to survive in the cold. Mammals first evolved to be able to survive in the cold. But when the meteor hit the earth and killed all the dinosaurs, and the earth got real cold, because the sun was covered up with dust, you know what survived the best? The mammals who had evolved to live in the cold. And most of the reptiles died out, including the dinosaurs. And the mammals were left to repopulate and that's why mammals are pretty dominant today. You see mammals everywhere running around, not dinosaurs. The dinosaurs died out because it got real cold. Yes? Did the mammals have to learn to adapt to the cold because the dinosaurs were in the hot places so they had to get in cold? Exactly. Cold was the only place around, so mammals evolved to live there. Most of them small and scurrying around. You know, when the seasons change, you still got to hide from dinosaurs, but you do a little better in cold areas. And then as soon as all the dinosaurs died, then the mammals just took off. When I say took off, it took 60 million years to evolve to what we have now. But in evolutionary terms, it, it took off. I'm going to finish this chapter tomorrow, so thank you for filming. And, uh